Hi, my name is Yulon Lin, and I'm a developer advocate for Data Studio. In a previous video, I showed you how to get started with the Data Studio developer tooling, which provides a template visualization and really opinionated and helpful scripts to help you get started. In this video, I'll show you how I actually use the tooling to build a visualization. Often when I'm building a visualization for community visualizations, I'm starting with a viz that I've already built using local data, and I'm converting it to work with Data Studio community visualizations. Let's take a look at a heat map that I've built in D3.js that I'd like to put into Data Studio. So I've built this heat map. It shows temperature by day of week and time of day. And so you can see that there's um, two dimensions. There's an X dimension and a Y dimension of, along which the tiles are distributed. And I have one metric that, in this case, it's temperature that I use to color the tiles. Now, in order to use the local development tooling to convert this into a community visualizations, there's two parts to it. One is the local development workflow. What are the things I use with our tooling? How do I get started? What's the order in which I run different scripts? The second consideration I have is what's the difference between having a visualization that runs off of local JSON and a visualization that's taking in data and user input sometimes from Data Studio. So let's review what some of those differences are, what some of those workflows look like. So the workflow for developing a community visualization using the tooling, first thing you start with is you make a new project using npx at google slash dscc gen viz. Right, you run this command in the command line. It sets up a project for you. You have sample data. You have a working visualization. You have some nice helper scripts. The next thing you do is you update your config. You update your visualization config so that you can get new sample data. We have some helper functions that allow you to run a quick command so you can deploy something in Data Studio and get a sample of the message that you might get from Data Studio when you're running the visualization. Then you develop locally. This is what's really fun. You're able to see your changes really quickly in your browser. And once you're happy with them, deploy them to a dev bucket, maybe make a couple more changes, and then deploy a prod version, something that you're ready to share, and then use it in reports, share it with other people. The other thing we want to talk through first is how you would convert a visualization. So one is that the data format is different. I'm not going to talk through all of the nuances of how to access your data in Data Studio, but if you review our documentation, we have a very specific way that you access your data um, that might be different from maybe a hard-coded JSON file that you're used to. And most of that is because we want to make sure that you know how to access the data no matter what fields the user inputs into the dimensions and metrics of your visualization. The second thing to pay attention to is how to update variables for accessing style elements. Community visualizations expose style elements in the property panel where you're able to say, change the font based on user selection or change the color of something based on user selection. But this means that instead of hard coding what your font is or hard coding what your color scheme is, you want to change those to be variables that access the data that Data Studio passes to you. These are points that I'm going to gloss over in the next couple minutes. So keep them in mind when I talk about maybe some of the things that I've skipped from going from a local visualization to a community visualization. So now let's take a look at the community visualization template. Right. So I've set up a template viz that I'm going to use to convert into the heat map. And so this is basically what pops out at the end of creating the viz template flow. Now I'm going to go into my editor, and this is index.js of the viz template. A couple things to note right now. One is that local is true, and two is that I'm currently using this kind of viz.firstviz, which is the viz template that the visualization template spits out. Now what I want to do is I want to update the config. So I want to update source index.json um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a configuration that defines two dimensions and one metric as I was talking about with the heat map before and 
I'm going to copy and paste it in because I don't think any of you have interest in watching me write JSON from scratch, but just to review two dimensions, one metric, and then one style element. Basically, I want the end user to be able to choose what font the visualization is using. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go into my um, terminal and I'm going to run this command npm run update underscore message. And what this does is it deploys a visualization to Data Studio that allows me to get a sample post message from uh, Data Studio. And so I'll copy that viz bucket that was spit out, deploy the visualization in Data Studio. And you see now that I have a sample message. I'm going to go into the style of the property panel and select a particular font, maybe Tahoma, go into view mode and copy this message. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to my code and look at this local message.js file. So this file used to contain the sample visualization um, data for the visualization that shipped with the template. And I'm just going to paste in the thing that Data Studio printed out. Now that I've done that, I can update the JavaScript file to have a version of that heat map. I'm not going to bore you with the details of my D3 development workflow. And go back to the browser. And this is the, so this now is the heat map converted to work with the Data Studio code. So what I've done here is I have a sample message from Data Studio. I've changed the styling and I've changed the way data is parsed to reflect that. And let's see what that looks like when I deploy it to Data Studio. I want to go back here, change this const local to false, because if it's at um, in a Data Studio, Studio report, um, it's no longer local. I'm going to run this build dev command. And that just means I'm building without caching and without minification. And then I'm pushing it to my dev bucket. And now if I go back to Data Studio and I refresh the page, I have a heat map. And if I go into edit mode, I'm also able to, let's say, switch the um, X and Y dimensions, maybe change the font family. Now, what if, for example, I wanted to make some changes to my visualization before I decided that I was ready for caching, ready for a minified deployment? I would go back into my code, and I would say const local is true. And when I do that, you can see it running in my browser again. And let's say I wanted to change the color scheme. So what I would do here is just change this line to say, let's say, interpolate spec troll. And you can see that now the heat map running locally in my browser has changed color schemes. Let's say now that I want to deploy this to Data Studio and I'm ready for this to be my final production version, build prod. So here I'm running with caching en enabled and minification on so that my JavaScript files are a little bit smaller. And once it's built, um, my visualization is now being deployed to my prod GCS bucket. And so you can see that it's giving me a Google Cloud Storage bucket that's named Video Heat Map Prod. Go back into Data Studio. And if I replace it, the visualization with this prod one. Actually forgot a step here. I should have changed local to false. And so let me rebuild. And now we can see it in Data Studio. 
and we have a heat map and we've changed the color scheme for the heat map here as well. You can add other styling elements if you wanted to be able to add a title or not, if you wanted the user to be able to change the color scheme through the style in the property panel. So let's, let's quickly go back and summarize what that workflow was for converting a visualization, for developing a community visualization with tooling. You made a new project, updated the config, you have to get new sample data so that as you're developing and making changes locally, it's reflective of the kinds of data you're going to get back from Data Studio. Then you develop, then you develop, uh, deploy to your dev bucket, make maybe a few more changes, deploy your production version, and then you're ready to share it um, and deploy your visualization. So I've just shown you how to take an existing visualization and convert it to a Data Studio community visualization as well as how to use the local development workflow. This is a workflow that's reflective of a lot of the ways I build my visualizations day to day, and I hope you find it helpful. Review our documentation at developers.google.com slash data studio slash visualization. Share them with us on social media using the hashtag data studio devs. And thanks for watching. Happy visualizing.